to all of you new vegans out there. Here's a little song. Happy Vegan Declaration Day to you. Happy Vegan Declaration Day to you. Whether you've been vegan for a lifetime or, or just a minute, welcome to the club. We're so glad you're in it. for all of you new vegans out there and it is for a blaze well in advance to when he becomes vegan one day well you never know you know we got to be optimistic about these things I'm going to be reviewing a blaze's video that he did on January 8th and I'll give you some of my comments and some quotes from him he says I'm pretty sure that vegan phobia is not a thing he says well, I can tell you that it is a thing. There are children who are constantly being bullied and abused because of the fact that they don't eat animals and because they feel deeply in their heart that they have to speak out in defense of the animals. So an example for vegan phobia would be when a kid is eating their sandwich, their tofu, their lentil burger or whatever, and then another kid will come up and put a piece of bacon in their face and just say, Ah, how do you like this dead pig? Now, see, that's an example of vegan phobia. Because veganism, at its core, is not about food. It's about the animals. And if a child is very well in tune and feels deeply that they don't want to pay for the rape, torture, and murder of these animals, which is what happens in these cycles, and then somebody comes and sticks the dead animal in their face on purpose, that is a form of very severe, severe discrimination because that kid is immediately taken back to the images that they've seen about the animals. Maybe they've seen some documentaries and it, it pains them to their core. One child actually committed suicide. I think there was many, but I don't wanna quote ones that I haven't actually seen myself or read a specific, I mean, about. But, uh, you know, if this kid was bullied so much in that fashion that they committed suicide. So please don't be vegan phobic. Don't deny that it exists. It definitely exists. And it's so painful because these kids who are young animal rights activists are extremely sensitive. And they have, some of them been vegan since birth and others have become vegan at about the age of whatever, all different ages. It could be eight, nine, 10. Some of them are eating lamb and then they find out it, they make a, a connection their parents you know they ask their parents like what do you mean this is lamb like mary's little lamb like the little lamb from that we just saw and, uh, on a show or, or uh, you know at the petting zoo or whatever and the parent nonchalantly says yeah and then the kid says i i don't i don't want to eat any animals i don't want to hurt them and there's many videos where they've shown vegan kids like that who are just bursting into tears and just in agony at being forced to eat these dead animals a lot of parents think that they have to feed meat to kids but they don't what's important is they have a well-balanced diet as long as kids get all the nutrients they can be vegan from the age of being just a brand new baby when every baby is born vegan, kids, teenagers, parents, grandparents, pregnant moms, all you need to do is have a balanced diet, but you don't need to ever eat eggs, you don't need cheese, you don't need to drink cow's milk, you don't need any meat in order to be okay. You have to take certain supplements like B12, but what would you rather do, have a B12 pill or would you rather take a knife and stab an innocent animal who wants to live and be with their family? For me anyway, it was pretty clear. Once I found out all of this stuff, there was just no choice. I had to be vegan. It didn't happen overnight for me though. Just like with you guys, I didn't like to hear the message at first, found it difficult and uh, 
I, I, I didn't want to deal with it. I, I tried to look the other way and try to pretend like it was just, oh, that doesn't really happen. That terrible treatment of the animals here in my country. I'm in Canada. It must be somewhere else. And then I just did research. It took me a long time. It, it didn't come so easy. It, it takes about a hundred clicks until you're vegan. You have to think about it. You have to get the message in your heart. You know, here's an example of one click. You might see a, a mug like this. I showed this in another video, but you might see that mug. Some of you might think, I don't care, whatever. And others might look at it and go, okay, wait, cow's milk is for baby cows. And you might have that moment where it dawns on you. Yeah. Why am I drinking cow's milk? Why am I not drinking pig's milk? Or you might think to yourself, wait a second, milk is for babies. Why am I drinking milk past the stage of being a baby when no ad other animals do that? And why am I drinking the milk of another species? So if that really hits you in the head, you make that, that logical connection, and then you think, well, why is it that we do drink this milk? And then you realize it's these industries that have promoted these things to try to sell their product. And when you get that in your head, and when you see how the pigs are treated, or sorry, the cows are treated, did I say pigs before? I mean cows, obviously. The, the cows are treated in the industry and how they are removed. The babies are just ripped away from their moms so that we can steal their milk. Like if this gets to you, that might just be one click and you still need another 99 because after that you, you go home or whatever, you go to a friend's house and they're eating cheese on pizza and you, you're like, oh yeah, pizza. And you're eating this. And then you, you kind of need another click to realize, wait, cheese comes from milk. So, what I'm saying though, regarding um, Ablaze's comment here is that yes, vegan phobia does exist and it's important that we are sensitive to the needs, these uh, psychological needs of, of people who are vegan and to not purposely hurt them. See, one of his other comments is, if anyone eats meat in front of you, is that vegan phobia? So here's my answer to that. If somebody's eating meat in front of you and they have no clue what's going on, they don't know that you're vegan, they're just minding their own business, eating a burger or whatever, like, you know, McDonald's or whatever, even a family member, and they don't know that this bothers you, then it's not, it's not really vegan phobia. Vegan phobia is bullying. It's being on purpose mean. Now, if you're, it gets a bit tricky though. Like if you have somebody uh, at the Christmas table who there's one vegan and there's, 12 non-vegans, um, is that considered to be bullying? Is that vegan phobia? And you know, that, that is tricky. If they're not doing it on purpose, they're just minding their own business, eating, and they're just like, well, you know, you don't have to be here at Christmas dinner if you don't want to. Well, what do you think? Do you think that's vegan phobic? In a way, the person could choose not to be in that situation, right? Then they're not faced with looking at all the, these dead bodies on the table. On the other hand, how hard is it for an entire family to simply not put dead animals on the table when that one family member is there? Because everybody can eat vegan food, right? So I would sort of say that it depends, it really depends. But let's try to stick with the idea, just for now, with the, the level of vegan phobia where it is deliberately trying to hurt that person. Okay, waving bacon into someone's face, or um, let's say a, a company that, that deliberately doesn't make attempts to accommodate vegans who are there. Like, let's say a boss um, um, is having a business meeting, a lunch, and the, the employee has to sit at that table and there's dead bodies there, chickens or, or pig, you know, ham, whatever. And it really bothers an ethical vegan who doesn't want to sit at a table with dead bodies. It will be like you having to sit at a table with dead cats or dead dogs. You know, it would affect you emotionally. Well, that's how it is for ethical vegans. It really gets to them. So if that employee says, hey, listen, can I opt out of this meeting or can we have this meeting without food so that I can concentrate and so that I won't feel these emotions of seeing this death? And the boss says, I don't really care about you. No, you have to sit there. Too bad for you. I would say, yeah, that's vegan phobic. 
because these are ethical principles based on trying to do the least harm to others. Like we want to have a society that's compassionate, right? Anyways, it, the, the levels are obviously different and nuanced, but the main thing that you need to know is that in the comment section, if you see people writing the writing meat just for the sake of writing meat, that's vegan phobic. It's completely unnecessary and it's cruel. And that's why I don't read my comment section. I mean, I let people write there, depending on which account I have. Sometimes I'll turn them off. I don't really have a magic formula. Uh, it, it's This is the difficult part. On the one hand, I, I want people to engage and, and be there. On the other hand, if it just becomes a big giant bullying territory under my umbrella, my name, that vegan teacher, why would I let these people there? That's why I turned the comments off on my TikTok account, the main one. For now, I don't know how long they've been off, maybe a couple of months now, I'm not sure. Is because I just thought of it, well, this is my home, my my TikTok timeline, my my comment section, and I just, I just don't want to invite people to, you know, take a dump in my kitchen. They're just like spewing out all of this garbage, this mean stuff and just unnecessary. I would leave it open, no problem, if people wanted to engage, wanted to ask questions, learn, even tell stories about themselves, how, you know, I'm trying to be vegan, but I'm having trouble with this thing, whatever. Like, if everybody was normal, kind, considerate, that would be great. So the vegan phobia that goes on is really terrible because it prevents us from having proper conversations. Um, let's see what else he says. She is brainwashing kids to be vegan. I don't think I'm brainwashing kids. I think I'm explaining what goes on so that people can make informed choices. I have explained this before that I believe that people are born vegan. Okay, you come out of your mother's womb, you're drinking your mother's milk, you're vegan. The only way that you become non-vegan is when your parents give you the body of a dead animal to eat and that's, you're not even aware of it. But even that, because you're not aware, you are still technically vegan. You see, veganism is about making the choice to not harm animals. So like you guys right now, if you hear this message and you know how much these animals suffer, and then you deliberately eat them, then that's not being vegan. But if somebody, say I was at a party or something and some really cruel person put something in front of me that had a dead, like let's say it was um, no, chicken noodle soup or something. I thought I was just having soup and that turns out that they put some chicken broth in there and I didn't know. They did it on purpose just to kind of snicker. Like that would be vegan phobic but I would still technically be vegan because I did not deliberately try to hurt animals. This brings me to another point uh, that Ablaze has. He says, um, uh, what did he write? Something about, okay, you're saying that vegans should not, are you saying, or, or you are saying that vegans should not drive cars because the fuel comes from dinosaur fossils. Like, this doesn't make any sense. Because if I'm driving a car, I'm not deliberately hurting animals. I'm not on purpose trying to do anything. Dinosaurs died a long time ago. Some vegans try very hard to drive their car as little as possible because they want to protect the environment for these animals. And of course, this is all tied in. You know, we are all part of this giant web. We're all intertwined and interconnected. So the less pollution that we contribute to, the better for the animals and the people, right? Because it all is connected to the, to the planet. Um, I was just gonna say something. I noticed that he had blurred out on his video my, my image here that I had shown, which is this one. I was someone's baby. <laughs> Please eat tofu instead. Why do you think he blurred out this image? You see, he could have helped just by showing when I was, he showed an image of me talking like this and then he deliberately blurted it out. One, because he thinks he might not get monetized by showing it, which is not a concern of mine. I want to tell the truth. Or number two, uh, he might just deliberately not want to show it to people because he's vegan phobic. What would have been helpful is for him to actually show the true video that I was, that I, that I was in. That would have been, and the ethical right thing to do, ethically right thing to do, to show what I was showing so that people could see my message. So I'm not sure why he blurred that out, but I urge you to not blur this out if you ever do a, a video of this part, this segment, because the reality is that this is what happens and we need to, to know that we are hurting 
animals. And what is the difference between showing this or showing the actual bacon? You might say, well, there's a huge difference. Okay, but what is it? What is it? Think about it. Um, what else did he say? TikTok is taking her down. I, I don't know why people keep saying this. People are supposedly have been trying to, to close my account on TikTok for, for months now. There was supposed to be something on the 1st of December. They all were rallying, like sending each other a message. A million people clicked, yeah, let's get her down. And then it was supposed to be um, on Christmas day, nothing happened. Then on January 1st, nothing happened. And they're still apparently trying. And I just made a video today on TikTok about this guy, Ethan Trace. And he is apparently <laughs> working with people to try to say that I broke eight Canadian laws or something, which is, it's just beyond ridiculous how ignorant people are. And that people believe these rumors. I mean, how is it breaking a law to talk about saving animals? And that people believe that, it's crazy. So I urge you to use your cognitive thinking your, your, your cognitive skills to think about what is going on. Just use your critical thinking skills. Like think, does this rumor make sense? If, it, if, it, if you don't know that it's, if you don't know if it's true, don't repeat it is basically my message. If you have not yet read this book, uh, Ablaze, here's one, I'm sure you probably won't read it, but this is the China study. And the reason I'm showing you is because this was a study that was done uh, on many, many people. And it's a very well-known study. And what the end result of this study was is that they realized that the more vegan you are, the healthier you are. There's tons of information in here that proves that the less animals you eat, the better, the longer you live. And I'm personally intending to live quite long. But, you know, vegans get sick just like anybody else. But I don't eat any dead animals. I don't eat any eggs. I don't drink milk. And I invite you to do the same thing. And um, I look forward one day ablaze to singing you for real, the Happy Vegan Declaration Day song. You know, when you go home and you stab your fork into the, the meat on your plate, just think about it. Do you really need to make that decision to be cruel when you can choose to be kind? Go to chronometer to find out what you're eating. You put your foods in there and it tells you what vitamins or proteins you might be lacking in case you're worried. But watch the movie, watchdominion.com. I've said it many times and I'm gonna repeat it forever because it's a great documentary to show you what really goes on. I thank you all for listening and the blaze, um, you know, keep trying, be a good guy and uh, I'll see you guys all in the next video. All right, take care.